48 hours ago, over 100 athletes descended on the town of Golden in British Columbia. 24 hours ago, the top secret race course was revealed for the first time ever. Overnight, competitors must prepare themselves and their equipment. And now, an 18-hour adventure of a lifetime begins. This is an adventure race. This is Race the Rockies. With no official start line to speak of, the racers are simply released into the environment from a clearing in the wilderness. Adventure racing is unlike any other sport. Divided into two main categories, sprint and expedition length. A sprint event, believe it or not, is anything under 24 hours, with expedition length races lasting for up to 19 days, non-stop. Expedition events dwarf the Ironman triathlon, and because they are non-stop, day and night can be longer than the total riding time of the Tour de France. Race the Rockies sits just inside the sprint category with a completion time of 18 hours. We asked race director Mike Melnick to describe the first part of the course. Competitors will start in Parsons. They will be given a surprise CP0 where they'll have to run uh, up the road, punch their maps, and then come back, and then they can launch their boats to begin a 37 kilometer paddle, which will take most competitors about three hours plus. Once they finish the paddle, they'll be at Nicholson. They'll transition to hike. They have to remember to bring their climbing gear because they're gonna be confronted with a couple of ropes challenges. They'll hike up the Columbia Valley about five or six kilometers until they reach the massive zip line. At the zip line, they have to decide if they can handle it or not. All team members must go across as one uh, or they're disqualified. But for now, the racers will just focus on the long paddle directly ahead of them. And this 37 kilometer section is starting to show everyone exactly what kind of terrain they will be up against. Yeah, paddle yet. Probably after four hours, I may get it. Traditional adventure racing is a mixed gender team sport. Groups made up of both men and women must stay together for the entire duration of the course. Mike Melnick chose to open this event to individual competitors to try and make it more accessible to rookies. I've done a number of shorter races, 12 hours to 36 hours. I've done a few expedition races, all the way up from three days to 12 days. Each one of them has a, a number of ideas that I enjoyed and some ideas which I didn't. And I try to take those ideas that I liked and disliked and separate them out so that all the best aspects of adventure race is brought into one race. After a long, wet paddling section, the racers arrive at the first transition area. Yeah, I found it got longer as we went along. But it was uh, nice, a whole lot of eagles and herons and things flying around, so it was nice that way. That was nice when it paddles scenic because it gets boring. Hard work, start the morning. Transition areas are where participants change race disciplines, in this case from canoes and kayaks to the first orienteering section. Transition areas also provide teams the opportunity to access their equipment boxes. After the secret course was revealed yesterday, racers had only four hours to carefully pack two bins. Racers adhere to a strict leave no trace philosophy, and they must carry everything they need in and out of the forest. If they followed directions and planned properly, they should have everything they need for the next few hours. What is that pink stuff? Oh, you don't know. What's in the Barbie thermos? Let's open that up. Beef stew. Yummy. 
Yeah. <laughs> Anything in a Barbie thermos is good. <laughs> the first competitors came into the transition in about three hours. They are ready to leave as the majority of racers follow about 45 minutes later. Yeah, we're, uh, I believe we're dead last and uh, that's exactly where we want to be. Uh, expecting just that long and pretty slow and yeah, it's pretty good though. Orienteering is the art of making your way through the wilderness with nothing but a map and compass. Here, skill and strategy can have enormous effects on rank and fatigue. Some of the strategy always comes as you're going, depending on what you find. Can this stay so, low? you can never say for sure what you're going to do. Uh, mine I'll throw in the bin but again. I have a good idea of where we're going. <laughs> we gave blood, I think, at this transition. Although a 37 kilometer paddling section may be a full day to others, it is safe to say now is where this race truly begins. We are going that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you guys race, just follow the guys oh, in front yeah. of you? They can't be lost, can they? <laughs> Excellent. So you follow him. He's uh, races before? First one. Rookie team. Rookies. Rookies. Hey, your route plan, guys. Yep. Just trying to get away from the mosquitoes. Basically, we're <laughs> Every day is an adventure race. I have intensely thought about training. Yeah, we've been watching the Tour de France, too. Yeah. <laughs> that really inspired us. Well, we're going to go for the zip line and see what happens. That's kind of our plan right now. Yeah, I feel like this is like a sort of edge, like it like curves this way, right? Only, the only thing that curves is this thing right here. I don't know if I was expecting to see this road go the whole way. No, no, I don't think we're that lucky. <coughs> but I figured they got the ropes in somehow, so it's all part of it. Or you look for either signs of them or figure out how they got in, if it's ropes or, you know, if you're going to a boat section, they must take them in on a road. Of course, the ropes also could have been brought in from the other side of the crevasse which blows out through the window. We've had a wonderful hike. We saw some spiders and moss. No zip line. We're kind of thinking that we're following natural terrain, but it's a little deceiving. Okay, I have to hit up uphill. What do you think? Now, five hours into the race, teams are reaching the zip line. I think, uh, I think that's a little nerve-wracking, actually. <laughs> While stringing the rope across the 200-meter wide and 300-meter deep gorge by helicopter, the line was inadvertently set slightly uphill. Intended to be a one-minute high-speed downhill thrill ride, it has become a 15-minute exercise in exhaustion and adrenaline. I don't know if I can say this on film, but I'm going to crap my pants. <laughs> I don't know if, if my arms will give out first or if I'll do that first. <laughs> the first point where teams have to make a strategic decision is definitely at the start of the ropes. Psychologically, it's a very difficult challenge. We're talking 200 meters across, 300 meters down, and nothing but rock. The all team members must cross the zip line, and if they don't, they are disqualified so they must choose if they can do it or not. If they can't, their option is to descend down to the canyon floor and cross at a log crossing and then return to CP3 to check in with the staff on that side. So you're gonna give it a go? Well, I think so. We're gonna do some time calculations here, I think. What do you think, Garrett? Do 10, 12 minutes per person? Oh yeah, it'll be no problem. What do you think, Karen? You're not gonna do it? No. How come? Well, I'm getting ready to go across and, and hopefully not die, but 
<laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, just because of the time mm -hmm. and I'm concerned about the effort going across the rope, it might be uh, might be better to keep moving and, and stay on the trekking. I'm going all the way. This might be coming out on the way down, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, I don't want to hike all the way down and all the way back up that canyon, so I want to take the shortcut across. No zippy for today. But a zippy. We don't have the upper body strength no, to do that. No, we watched, we, we said That's that. all uphill. That's not 80 meters down. With wait times of up to two hours, choosing the traverse is almost certainly a race-ending decision. However, at any adventure race, there are only a handful of teams looking to cross the finish line in first place. Whether working together and bonding as a team or challenging yourself as a soloist, merely finishing an adventure race is quite an accomplishment. Those that choose to wait for the rope traverse will be rewarded with the experience of a lifetime. The others who decided to move on are still in contention and will literally have a very different view of this incredible exercise. Helmets? Paul? Helmet! Don't, uh, don't fall right above each other. Anyone hoping for an easier way out is about to be sorely disappointed. Where the zip line went slightly uphill, the only other way across is straight down, only to ascend the other face. Okay. All right, well, I just want to see why everybody's going down there first. Yeah, that's this is a, oh this is two A. This is to bypass. Oh, yeah, I didn't mark the alternate. I just I just did. Oh, okay. This is too dangerous to go down. I think we should just, I think we should hike along yeah. here and go down there. I think we go down. Then we have trees at least. Yeah, and go down through the trees. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. Then we can hang onto the trees and there's no boulders. Okay. Once the racers have found the alternate river crossing, they must still clip into ropes for safety. While slightly less spectacular than the zip line, a slip into fast flowing white water could be just as deadly. Now, regardless of which route racers picked, there is no place to go but up. The bush gets thicker, the hills get steeper, and their bikes are waiting for them at the top of the Kicking Horse Resort. A massive hill climb all the way from the river elevation of 790 meters to the resort top of 2,700 meters, so two vertical kilometers up. That's a lot of elevation in a short race. They can expect a very physical course. There's a, a few navigational sections where they're going to have to make a, several route choices in order to get themselves up on top of a ridge. It's very demanding, it's very beautiful, and they'll be rewarded for the effort they put in. It's been quite horrible, to be quite honest. <laughs> Lots of bushwhacking. And I'm sure there was an easy way to do it, we just didn't find it. So, bushwhacking sucks. Bushwhacking yeah. sucks. In return for their efforts, participants will be treated to incredible changes in scenery. Passing through two kilometers of vertical elevation gain dramatically illustrates variations of the mountain environment. Once they escape the grasp of the forest, dense bush will give way to alpine flowers, rocky ridges, and ultimately through to the snow-capped mountain peaks. So moving, buddy. It's all good. Except for that bad decision, we're, we're doing all right. Good time. Just as there are rookies in the field of participants, this also happens to be Mike Melnick's first time as the race director. After six years as a competitor, he took ownership of Race the Rockies with big intentions. The legacy was the organization and the, the scenery that you get to see on these races. You always get up high in the Alpine, you always get uh, gorgeous vistas. Uh, it's always very physical and demanding. I wanted to keep that. Uh, it's also very organized. You know where you have to go initially, you know where you have to go next. And that sort of thing is uh, something that people really need to have if they're transitioning from other sports such as triathlon or, or running. I wanted to bring together all the best things about all the races I've ever experienced. Um, I've experienced races mostly from a racing standpoint, sometimes as a volunteer. And the experience that you get from that is something that changes you. you know? It's something that you carry forward into your daily life. 
It, builds, it gives you confidence, it gives you intelligence in terms of how to handle situations. And from those points of view, I wanted to make sure that those were amplified so that they get to experience adventure racing like I have. I think uh, what got me into the sport was the potential for teamwork, the places that you get to go, the travel. And then once I, I tried my first adventure race, I found out that it wasn't all physical stamina. It was a lot of mental and uh, uh, smarts that got you through the race. You know, you're working so hard, you, you came out of the last leg next, next to last, and then you make a good move and all of a sudden you're in the top five. That kind of uh, excitement is something that, that really sets adventure racing apart from most other sports. It can't get much worse. Can't get much worse, why? I'm assuming we're in last place. Nope, not even close. Second last? <laughs> I think you're well ahead of most other teams. You're kidding me. I haven't seen too many pass by. Cause we screwed up when we got, uh, no, we took the scenic route. We took... <laughs> Legs are shaking a little now. <laughs> well, Brent's lucky that way because every time he picks a route that seemingly would be absolutely stupidity, it turns out to be really, really good. We weren't quite sure where the top was. We couldn't go back down. And uh, oh, it, was thick. it was thick. It was maybe a poor route choice, <laughs> one might say. <laughs> but Talking to but... others, it doesn't seem like there was a better route choice. Right pushed through the woods for an hour and then finally hooked up to this trail. Yeah. So we probably should have been on that trail in the first place, I guess, but whatever. We're here, we're, we're moving. Here. We're here and we're hungry and we are tired and I have to pull Megan. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's all we'll, right. We'll, we'll make it to the end. Well, it was harder than I thought it was gonna be, that's for sure. Which part? Uh, the elevation gain. I'm gonna pull out at the bottom, I just... Just not enjoying it anymore. I think you're done. Just, yeah, it's just I'm not that physically tired. I just so don't. I don't know. Well, I ran out of water about an hour and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've been out of water for. I've been out of water for two hours. Two hours. I want my Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> my wife and daughter are meeting me at the bottom, so I'll have dinner with them and salvage part of my weekend. It's been really kicking our butts. See guy with sore feet. See guy with sore feet walk. The most beautiful race I've ever done. It's worth all the uh, pain and suffering. Uh oh, you're gonna be that wind of me now. Stop the Did you get that on film? Sweet. <laughs> Come to see us uh, at our finest, eh? Having completed a 20 kilometer hike, teams are excited to see their mountain bikes waiting at the second transition oh, area. I can see where my bike's parked. That's right. So I'm gonna go there. Right on. A few minutes and you're ready. All right. The final section, which I think is expedition quality, is technical single track. Lots of it. The mountain bikers in the, in the race pack will really enjoy this course. The people who are not technical savvy, they're gonna have a difficult time getting down the mountain. Adventure races never use the same route twice and always showcase terrain unique to the area. With the final checkpoint set at the Kicking Horse Ski and Mountain Bike Resort, this race the Rockies includes a world-class downhill cycling route. What took up to five hours to climb is being descended in under an hour. Although Mike has set a very high bar at this event, he has been careful not to alienate the entry-level racer. In an amazing feat of logistics, he has been able to design a beginner, intermediate, and expert course in one. When racers reach the end of this intense cycling section, they will make a decision. This year's race has an unusually high number of strategic decision points. Other races, like 36-hour races I've been in, usually have one or two where you have to make a choice this way or that way, the extra course or not. But typically there isn't three decision points which can make or break a team. Participants who have reached their limit are allowed to finish here with the sport course and an official ranking. Oh, we made that decision uh, halfway back past that mountain over there. We were, uh, we decided that uh, that was enough elevation for one day. The decision will be to terminate now. We're just boinking on the ride. So where are you headed right now? Um, to the bar, I think. Maybe shower. 
Not sure what order. Others who have the energy to burn and the ambition to place at the top will be allowed to advance to a second cycling section. We're gonna go for it. The, the regular course, the 85K, so we're gonna do 20 more K. Well, I doubt whether we finish, but there's no <laughs> doubt what we're going to try. To discourage all but the most determined, this route goes straight up the mountain face. When these racers return after an estimated five hours, the choice will be required again. This time, if they choose to go on, teams will set down the bikes for another tricky orienteering section. Uh, Each completed state of the race will rank teams above the competition. The trick is this. If they are not finished within the non-negotiable 18-hour total race time limit, they will be disqualified, making their extra effort completely worthless. It's even further. Yeah, remember when you left I mean, that's what makes adventure racing a mental game. You have to decide if you can do it or not. You have to decide which route to take. You have to decide if you can attempt the more difficult courses that are presented before you. Um, we decided that uh, we're going to go out there and see how fast we're moving, but uh, given that it's 8.30, course closes in three and a half hours, no one else is in transition, we might, uh, we might decide to uh, play it safe. Becoming a race of attrition, only 23 of 106 athletes completed the regular course, and only two teams are racing for first place on the advanced stage. We'll try and get as many as we can, see what we can do. I'm pretty beaten, but Trevor has pushed me and Angelique half around this bloody course. I'm not letting him down now. Referred to as a row game, this tricky orienteering section consists of unmanned checkpoints that can be gathered in any order. It is impossible to know where the two remaining teams are, or in which order they may finish. For now, the sport and regular racers continue to reach the end. Unlike all other sports, an adventure race finish line seems anticlimactic. After the incredible scenery, the insurmountable obstacles, and once in a lifetime experiences, this final checkpoint merely allows competitors to stop and truly enjoy the journey they have made. In the end, Team 311 Wild Rose took first place by completing all race stages and checkpoints. Team 314 Comex Kinetics would finish second with just one checkpoint less.